it feels so, 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 so good to be back home in Night City. What a crazy couple of weeks it's been. I went back to Riders Republic, got a little extreme sports under my belt again. I even took an impromptu vacation to New York City and randomly skateboarded for the first time pretty much ever. That was a lot of fun. And then I even found myself on an alien planet, kind of trapped in a time loop. So yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of crazy. But home, sweet home. Looks like the elevator is already here. Yeah. Nicola, taste the love. So, I don't have a plan, necessarily, today. I literally just got back, coming back to my apartment. Um, a couple things I do need to do. I need to check on my cat, so we're going to do that right now. I need to return a hard drive to my friend. So, we'll do that as well. And then, I was thinking about maybe going to see a Ripper dock. Just to check in and see if I needed to update any firmware. Uh, it's kind of been a while, so I thought I should probably, probably get that checked. And I will probably get something to eat, or at least something to drink, something to fill my system back up, kind of running on empty a little bit. Oh, whoops. Left a lot of trash. Are you sleeping? You sleeping, boy? Oh. You are a little angel. Look at you. Well, I don't want to wake him. He's so cute. That's what I gotta love about cats, you know. Gone for a little while. They're just fine. They can take care of themselves. They are just fiercely independent. Oh, man. Love that view. Love that view. You know, New York was pretty cool. Don't get me wrong, but it's got nothing on Night City. Yeah, New York, fun place to visit, but I don't know, I guess I'm just a, a night city guy. Alright, well, there's also something else I have to do, and uh, <clears throat> it kind of involves the three seashells, so I'm just going to gonna edit this out because that would be gross if I left it in. Alrighty, well, at least uh, Nibbles is doing okay. Sleeping like a little angel, I'm not gonna wake him. And, uh, it's 
Gonna keep moving on through our day. Gonna go uh, try to return this hard drive to my friend. He didn't really give me a, a deadline to drop it off, but I just like to take care of those things sooner than later. You know, especially before you forget. So. I got nothing to do today, might as well, and uh, don't know if he'll actually even be home, but if he's not, that's cool, if he is, we'll hang out, probably, but I think he is working. It's so crazy, even in Night City, even inside this complex, you can hear the birds chirping. I don't know what it is about Night City. People love their pet birds. It's cool though. You know, the air, the air feels kind of the same, but New York and Night City, they both have a distinct urine smell. I know, it sounds weird, but not everywhere you go, not in all corners, but sometimes you're just walking by and it's like, Am I in a restroom or a city? But that's a uh, city life for you. I'm Jillian Jordan. Scientists from Biodyne Systems have announced a breakthrough in the fight against multiple sclerosis. MS is one of the two diseases that can I'm paying attention to what's going on in Night City. I try not to really watch the news so much. It's just depressing and Ooh. oh my god, you should be afraid of this. So, oh my god, I'm turned around in my own elevator. Don't even remember which way to go. There we are. Oh man, it's funny. Even though I do this sort of thing everywhere I go, I like to walk, take it in. There is something about Night City. Some of you might be thinking, well, yeah, there is something to it. I mean, as you can see, people are free here. No problem, officer. I've been not going to bother you. This view never fails. It's kind of what sealed the deal. Get in this apartment. When there are many reasons. It's a great spot, but oh, I love the view. And it's actually a really nice day. I will say, I got lucky weather-wise. New York was beautiful. Riders Republic, it's always beautiful there, depending on where you're at. It was really nice for me. And even in uh, the Tower of Sisyphus. Nah, I mean, that was kind of crazy. It was like a lightning storm, but I like the rain, so I didn't mind it, actually. Hmm. Oh, excuse me. Oh, Tom's Diner. You know what? Hmm. I don't know if I'm hungry for food food. 
kind of want maybe just like a coffee or maybe like a bubble tea or something. And it's going to cut traffic. Don't hit me. Thank you. Good food though, you know. It is what it is. It's diner food, comfort food. Guess I'm not as hungry as I thought, but I could definitely use some caffeine, so I'll probably do that. Any good deals? Little cat, it's like little nibbles. Mm. Well, I'll wait a little bit. I'll wait a little bit. And I don't know what it is. You know? Almost like being a tourist in your own city. I like coming down this alleyway. It's just such a random group of people and that's what we are. We're all in this world together. Trying to figure it all out. What a place to try to figure it out. Excuse me, sir. Hey, that dress is pretty cool. Don't know if YouTube would agree. Ooh. I mean, I'm not monetized, so I don't have to worry about that. But I also don't want to get banned. So I'll have to look at the editing room on that one. I've mentioned this in other videos, but I'm going to have neck problems within a year. Because every time I'm back in Night City, I'm always looking up, cranking my neck left and right. Just like taking it in. Let's go through here. That traffic. I don't know. You know, New Yorkers, they honk more. But I don't know. A lot of traffic today in Night City. Alright, I think I'm going to get a bubble tea here. Hey, what's up, man? Oh. Smoke a little bit. Uh, can I get a strawberry uh, milk tea? Let me just go over here. I'm going to... Oh. Blast. So, I'm going to drink some of my bubble tea. And there are some tapioca pearls at the bottom, 
So I'm going to chew on some of those. I'll leave timestamps if you don't like chewing noises. But I'm going to try it out today. Yogurt's kind of nice. And yeah, we're just right back to my building. Eh, you know. Like I said, I don't have much going on today, so. Whatever. By the way, if you like where we are right now, X marks the spot, Mega Building 10, and come over here. Oh, whoops. Shouldn't have done that. Oh. It's all good, see? Relic malfunction. <clears throat> Okay, boy, mm. always fun. Maybe I should go to that Ripper Dock first. Well, anyway, don't remember exactly where I'm standing, but if you like this view, I have a video where I just stand here for an hour. I do. You can check it out. I'll leave a link below. She'll get out the way, don't you worry. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna take another sip. I'm gonna go for a walk. I mean, we are on a walk. Just roll with it. Mm-hmm. You guys all right? What's going on here? What's up, man? Pretty good. All right. I'm gonna get out of my way, man. Jeez. Ooh. You know what? All this walking around. We're gonna get nowhere. <laughs> Let's go back to the car.
don't hit the cop car. Go. I don't know, I think like many people, as a kid, like tapioca pudding and stuff is like gross, to me at least. I guess I should only speak for me. It's always kind of gross, but I gotta say, it's not too bad as an adult. We really lucked out to a nice day. I almost wish you, know, you could go into like like a theater type of room and you could feel the weather of this place. And hear me out, even the smell. I know, just imagine how much more immersed you would be. But I guess until technology catches up. Great part right here. YouTube is going to have to be the way we do things. Sure, I'll take a photo. Thank you, yeah. Uh, it's your ASMR friend. Yeah, please. Like and subscribe. Oh, thank you. That was really nice. in a little bit it is absolutely not going into the video so <laughs> you can hear the after effects of it in my voice What's interesting about eating and chewing sounds is I had to grow to like it myself. You know, it's not the typical ASMR trigger for me. But when it's done right, it can be nice. Um, so, constructive feedback, let me know. You guys like that? Are you opposed to it? What are your feelings? Your thoughts? And chewing sounds? Eating sounds? Whatever it may be. ASMR is so huge now. There's a trigger for everyone. Soft spoken. Tapping, finger flutters. I could just make a whole list. And of course, as soon as I suggest, like, I could make a whole list. Yeah, name five more. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's 
It's always funny, people just run into each other. There's so many people. I just... And I do it too. I run into people. It's almost like a joke. It's like we're puppies running around. We just bump into each other. Sorry, there's just... A really intrusive... Water pipe sound. Somehow, it almost sounds like... It's on my left ear. Must be coming from somewhere at Night City. Hopefully it doesn't ruin this nice video I'm trying to put on for you guys. Sometimes you just, you have to remember to breathe. My goodness. Exhale. See how tall this line of sight. morning. Perfect timing. So, uh, let's talk. <laughs> so, okay. When I was in New York City, I actually bumped into a friend. An old friend from way back when I was still doing Filmmaking here, well, not here. I moved to Night City years later, back in my hometown. And it's actually kind of nice to go back. We'd worked on a few things together. I felt like I was so young back then, and you know, he was too. We were both hungry. For the work and we wanted to get better but it felt like the local scene just wasn't wasn't cutting it the money wasn't there the projects weren't there and the community is great don't get me wrong a lot of cool people a lot of cool projects happen i mean art is beautiful in that way it doesn't matter about a budget if you tell a good story a good story is a good story, you know. But yeah, he actually moved out to New York to pursue acting. And what a great city it is to do it. But even still, it's hard work. And, you know, like he said, he went from being a medium fish in a small pond as he said, to being, you know, a minnow in an ocean. And, uh, yeah. But, sounds like he's doing well. You know, has a day job to put a roof above his head, but he's able to get projects here and there, do some cool stuff. So, really nice to hear because yeah I when I stepped away there were so many things about it you know but like I said the money wasn't there projects weren't there and it 
it just didn't seem like my calling to do it. I mean, to make films, you really gotta love it. I mean, you have to put every ounce of blood, sweat, and tears into your projects because there's so much content in the world. So many stories to tell. So, kudos to anyone who wants to tell their story, to tell someone else's story. It's nothing short of a miracle to get a movie made. Honestly, there are so many moving parts. The fact that anything gets to the table and finished. It's astounding. So, it's not that the hard work isn't there either. There are passionate people doing it. But yeah, that's what we talked about, you know, how that sense of community, you know, we miss that. Getting together, all these events, you know, finding the next partner to work with, the next script to work with, actors, you know, again, like, all those moving parts that aren't going to be visible on screen, but they're going on. It's a, it's a fascinating world. But yeah, my good friend was working and we worked on a lot of things together well, he moved and stopped making films and so yeah I I was ready to move on too but then there's also the reality of what that meant and you know the things you lose along the way He's still my friend, 100%, even if he is thousands of miles away. If he was in Night City, needed a place to crash, my doors open. We're damn near brothers, you know? Even though we haven't talked in years. But to me, that's how strong that friendship is. But in many cases, it's, in many instances, it's dead, you know. It isn't what it was before, you know. There's no collaboration, no check-ins, no back and forths. It's like you can't take time for granted. It's very precious. Along with water and air, it's one of our most precious commodities. And I'm not a saint about it. I'm not perfect. I'm not Alan Watts all ever present in the moment. But something I didn't mention to him, but I thought about after, is how when I was doing that stuff, even though I had more social relationships, you know, working relationships, a pretty nice standing in the community. By a lot of accounts, like a lot more going on. But I still feel like I'm the best version of myself today, walking up these stairs right now. more attuned to my emotions, I'm more plugged in as it is, to what I want, and the cliche of, well, I'm working on myself, well, yeah, everyone's on their own path. 
And it's so easy to get caught up in, well, I should be doing this. Oh, well, that person's doing the same thing I am, and they are, you know, four levels above me. And we start comparing ourselves. I've done it. You've done it. We do it. We just... It's like how we're wired, I think. And it's okay that you have to remind yourself, hey, go at your pace. And for me, yeah, I am that tortoise. I'm slow moving, but you know what? I win the race in the end. So, you just gotta keep putting one foot in front of the other. Easier said than done, 100%. It's easy to talk about something, but then when you have to put action behind it, that's where the work starts. So, just be kind to yourself if you're on that Breathe. You're fine. Just keep your head up and do what you need to do to keep moving forward. And that can be hard, I know. I have certain things in my life that you know, you can't control everything, and some things are out of your control. Like, you know, I have, I have a brother who, you know, went through some shit recently. And there's nothing I can really necessarily do or say that will fix it or amend it heal him it's his journey and that work has to be done by him but you know metaphorically put your hand out offer help I always worry about when these big things these Terrible situations happen, something sad happens to someone. What do you say in those moments? And recognizing that truly there really isn't anything you can do or say. But if you're there, if you can be there for someone, that's heroic. That gives you power. You aren't helpless. You're useful. You're doing what you can. And you're acting out of kindness. So. I have to remind myself of it. And if you need that reminder, boom. It's in your lap right now. What was that? More bubble tea? Sure. You can do that. Just remember that. <sighs> Gotta breathe. <laughs> Thank you.
not sure if it's working, but I hope. I hope those sounds are nice. Like I said, it was a trigger that I had to learn to appreciate and to like. And it's harder than it looks, harder than it sounds. <laughs> So, one thing, I didn't actually, I haven't talked to anyone about this really. Um, okay, so, over the few months, you know, I've been single for a while, but over the past few months, that loneliness really was starting to I was really starting to feel it, you know, and I don't know if I, if you don't know who I am, I, I do deliveries around Night City, that's my job, it's a cool way for me to explore the city, get to see different sides of it, there's a lot of cool perks about the job, as well as some just scary situations you run into and, and that kind of stuff, but yeah, you know, even though you interact with all these people, you never really get to know anyone. You don't have these long conversations. If it's anything, it's about the weather, traffic, no one cares the delivery person has to say they just want their package you know not to say that there are some cool people there's also some shitty people that treat you like shit but even when that happens I have to remind myself that everyone is fighting their own battle you don't know what that person has been going through for instance I delivered a headset to a guy, and with traffic, like, you know, he ordered it, it was a tight window, and I was late, and he was angry, so upset, cussing me out, stupid idiot, blah, 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 you know, and I remember just walking, thinking, like, okay, asshole, like, all that stuff, but, you know, if you think, well, what if, what if he was having a bad day, you know, what if he was about to do this interview to a new company in a position he's not too familiar with, and he wanted the best quality sound, and his headphones died the night before so in a panic he's getting prepared and he orders headphones for same day delivery which is what it was so yeah being late is a real detriment for him you know it's time taken away from him and time that he doesn't have thing that he bought, the thing he wants, the thing he needs, and there's maybe so many things associated with that. Well, maybe I was late, and now that seeps into his head of, well, I'm not going to get this job. I can't even get all the elements for the interview right. How am I going to do the job right? You know, there's just so many factors. That why would we think of it, you know? So maybe, maybe that was it. Maybe he was, maybe he's a really great guy that just had a really bad day. And 
it got to that boiling point where I was a place to point a finger to for a problem. He didn't have to blame himself. You know, I could be that, that target. scapegoat you know. or maybe he was just a jerk who wants his things on time doesn't care about how I had to do it that I was late just that he just that I was late and that's enough for him to be angry with it maybe he would have been unpleasant if I'd been on time or early I guess for me that I would rather believe in the good of people be forgiving in certain situations but hey I don't know all these answers I don't know what his day is like I don't know what he's going through so even though it was an unpleasant experience, still, you can still be kind to people. You can still find the good in people. So, you know, you swallow your pride and you just keep moving on. At least for me, it's like, I still want to treat people with respect and with kindness, so I can't let that take me away or deter me away from, from being nice, from being kind. I'm doing my job. Of course I didn't want to be late. It's my job to be on time. Of course I do not want to be late. Also, being kind to myself, forgiving myself for being late. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I love Charter Hill. You should really come here at night time. It's so much fun. So much fun. But just be careful, because, yeah, you could, uh, you know, you have too much fun out here, you can lose a lot of money out here. Drinks and food, all very good, can be very expensive out here. All night, every night. By the way, that is not the upgrade I'm seeking just want to put that out there now as you all know i have uh maybe you know maybe you don't know i have reinforced tendons so it's kind of important to keep an eye on that because if you think that you can get a second jump in the air and suddenly you can't when you've been used to that that can be a rough landing just want to make sure that everything's good. Maybe eventually we'll make it to a river dock. Whoa. Look at the balance on that. It's amazing. Oh. <laughs> Even in Charter Hill, you just know what to expect. Wow. Night City. Isn't it beautiful? Hmm. It's just so fascinating. Oh, imagine having a patio up there. 
must be nice. Alright, so. take a uh, public transit to get to my friend's house, drop this hard drive off, and uh, I actually don't allow recording, so, so anyway, we're gonna go in here, I gotta turn recording off, and I'll catch you on the other side, how crazy is this part? an amazing view. So, just dropped off my friend's hardware. He's actually not home at the moment, but he allowed me to come in to drop it off. And yeah, I thought, like, I gotta show this off. really cool. Really dig his place. And a massive TV. A pool table. Oh man. We haven't played pool forever. I miss that. Honestly, there were so many nights. Object. Golden flamingo. Might as well make myself a drink. Refreshing. I'm a little jealous. But again, another important reminder. I mean, I'm jealous. But it's not like I hate my friend. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy for him. Like, why shouldn't I be? They have this beautiful apartment, the job that they like, I'm proud of them, so, I think I've mentioned it a few times, just lots of reminders for yourself, you know, when you start kind of looking at things negatively, or you start comparing yourself, Probably unfairly, usually unfairly. Hey, you know what's cool? You know what's in? You know what the cool kids do? They treat themselves with kindness. You should too. Only I've been away for just a couple weeks and yeah. I feel like a tourist again. But you know, it's not like I was born in Night City. So it is still relatively new. Howdy. Friendships are cool, right? They are. Hmm. Let me test out my reinforced tendons that I was talking about. I should be able to jump over this. Yeah. It's fine. 
I don't see any problems. Maybe I'll hold off on that update. I didn't even use it in New York. Probably could have used it in the Tower of Sisyphus, but I had a grappling hook, so. And if you're lost on that, just check out my videos that are previous to this one. <laughs> Links in the description. I never finished my thought about my loneliness, did I? See, no, I don't even know. But in case I didn't, I don't think I did get into it. So I mentioned how I've been single for a while. And this year, this winter, just the longest winter. And that loneliness was really starting to hit. Oh yeah, because I started talking about my job. But it, it all connects. So, there's a girl I like that works at my job. Now again, I am just a delivery driver. You know, I am the grunt man. They could replace me faster than I could deliver the pizza across the street. Right? I mean, it's kind of like a sad reality. But, and that'll come into play. You know, I'm, I guess, somewhat insecure about it. I'm not ashamed of my job. I like my job. Like I mentioned, it has its pros and cons, but I like the service I provide. And I like helping people. I like being able to help people in that way. Again, I don't know their story, but whatever it is, food, any kind of cyberware, whatever it is they order, because I deliver everything. Whatever they need, I love that I can get it to them, provide that service. And yet, the woman that I work with, she works in the office. She's a little higher up. Right? And I feel like, well, there's no way she would be interested. And besides, she's way out of my league. I mean, you know, she's smart and funny. It, I don't know. I, uh, well, I realize something I know. There's this thing inside. It's like I hold on to this belief that I am unlovable. So for me, it's kind of easy to pick apart anything that has to do with me finding love or worth in that way. You know? And even though I've gotten better, because now that I recognize it, I can address it and face it. And I think I am getting better about loving myself. You know? And being kinder. What did I just say? All the cool kids do it. But yeah, so. I caught myself just picking apart every aspect of this. So, nah, don't pursue it. It's. You're not gonna get what you want. What you feel like you deserve. She's not gonna be interested. 
could be good enough. You know, I would say hurtful things like that I would never, ever say to my friends or someone I cared about. And yet, here I am compiling a list of why I should just give up on the idea of being loved. But no. And you know, part of that was self-evaluating and also the help of therapy. So, definitely have more tools. I can work with. And again, that's why I think I'm the best version of myself. And then I think of all the, th all the things I do. I've done some amazing things. Like I mentioned with film. I connected so many people. You know, I made these connections that I don't know where they, they go, where they flourish. I built, well, maybe not built, I helped foster a community of people getting together and pursuing their dreams and chasing after it. I did a lot of cool things, a lot of great things. I want to give myself more credit for that. And look, it's not really up to me if I'm a good guy, a nice guy. You know, it's the words and the actions. And it's ultimately up to you, or whoever I'm interacting with, whether directly or indirectly, it's up to them. It's not up to me to say I'm good. But if I act out of kindness and I take those actions to do good things, then maybe but it's still not up to me to decide if I'm that. Right? But also, like, hey, you do deserve love, you know that. Right? Like, cause there's, there's saying it, and then there's believing it. Because I would say, I deserve love. A couple years ago, I would say this. I deserve love. But my actions, my other words would be, yeah, but no, because you're not, you're not this. You're just a delivery person. You're not in management. You have ambition, but you don't have a big picture. Again, I'm just finding all these ways to pick apart yourself. I feel like I went on a tangent there. Absolutely did. But what I was getting to is that I feel like, no, you know what? I am worthy of love and I deserve to give myself an opportunity. So I'm going to do it, even though it's kind of scary to me to, to try to pursue a relationship or a connection, you know, because it could end in heartbreak, but 
c'est la vie, such is life. You have to roll the punches. And ultimately, if you think the answer is no and you do nothing, then you have your answer. It is no. But if you take that risk, if you put yourself out there, you don't know what that answer is. Because it could be maybe. It could be a yes. It still could be a no. But at least you would know. And it is so much better to know and to not have regret. To not know. Or to have regret in not trying. When you could have done something, you did nothing. That is worth. So, I've already started thinking of, you know, ways to approach this. excited. And again, it's not up to me, but I do think I have a good heart. And I hope that shows in the words and the actions that I do. So I will pursue this. We'll just see what happens. See where it goes. You know? really dived into a lot, didn't we? I was not expecting that. I really didn't know. Didn't have a plan, necessarily. Just thought I would check in with you guys. And, uh, certainly did today. And, uh, on that note, I'm going to keep walking, and I'm going to clear my head for myself, and I hope that if you take anything away from this, it's, again, to be kind to yourself. Be more forgiving to yourself, to others. If if it feels right, you know. If someone did you wrong, then that's a different story. But I guess for me, it's like I don't want to lose acting out of kindness. You don't see where those acts go. You know, saying something nice, doing something nice, it might change someone's entire day. Could change their week. And screw it, let's go big. It could change their life. You just don't know. It's like with anything, with a relationship, any type, working, romantic, friendship, you have to be willing to put yourself out there. And yes, just to drill it home one more time. Be kind to yourself and be well to others.